Okay, so I am going to talk about arithmetic statistics over number fields and function fields. So what does arithmetic statistics study? Basically, we have some ring, which just for this talk you may assume is just either Z or the polynomial ring over some finite field. And then, so a ring like this, or just any more general order in a number field or a function field. But you may assume it's one of those. And now, this ring has a natural size structure, so we can order z by just absolute value and fqt by degree. And now, what we want to study is the statistical properties of object parameterized by this ring. So, for example, we may, for example, consider just all the integer in 0 and x. This goes to infinity. And then to each n, assign some property or object of arithmetic origin and study the, its statistical distribution. So just as an example, for example, we have the prime factorization of n so we may consider this as a partition of unity just by normalizing and having the partition say log u1 plus say it with multiplicity u1 log pk and if we normalize everything by log n then we obtain a partition of unity into some summons and then we may ask about statistical properties about this for, for example you know how many w what is k or how how is the the largest value here is distributed <coughs> so the, these quench questions are well natural in number theory and they all have answers in this case but now instead for example we may replace n with some polynomial of n say n squared plus one then it becomes more interesting so it's this sort of problem that so theoretic statistics con considers so now another example with db square free integers so other types of arithmetic objects which we may attach to d is for example the cdb the class group the class group of the quadratic field q of square root of minus d so we may ask, for example, for its L torsion for some fixed L and take, again, all the D between 0 and X. X going to infinity. And, and we may ask, for example, how the, this is a group and how this group is uh, distributed. For example, what's the probability that it's cyclic or has any other, any, any given dimension. And this question is, of course, open. That there's this coin lens heuristics, which we don't know how to prove in general. And uh, so this is another question that may be studied. And another example is a more complicated object. So to each D, we will attach an L function. Function of s, d. This would be just the sum of chi. -a. I will define chi d shortly. So this is a fu function of a complex variable, where chi d is a, a cousin of so just d over n, the Kronecker symbol. 
So, and now this function, assuming GRH, has a set of zeros. So there are some 0 and 1. So there are some trivial zeros, and all the non-trivial zeros lie on the one-half line. And now, again, taking all the d in some range, we may ask how these sets of zeros, especially those near the critical point here, are distributed. So this is another question which is studied. And so in each case, what we do is we formulate some, some statistical model. Yeah, we try to say that there is some natural measure on the set of values our object can obtain, a measure which doesn't come from arithmetic, but from some uh, general consideration. For example, in this case, this would be a random group in the sense defined by Cohen and Lenstra. In this case, our model for the sets of zeros would be random, random symplectic matrices in this case. We have this model, and now our goal is to prove the, or approximate the results of this sort, is uh, basically to prove that this statistical model is, holds for this discrete set defined by the arithmetic. So this was, uh, these examples were all about uh, number field case. Now I will talk about the function field case, which is the one I've done most of my research on. So now it gets actually nicer because if we have a polynomial, and going back to an analog of the first example, say. So we have a polynomial, and let's say of degree n. And now f has its irreducible decomposition. Uh, which, OK, well, let's assume for simplicity that there are no multiplicities. Yeah. So we have this decomposition, and now we have a partition of n. So the pi plus k be a partition of n. So we may consider this partition. We, we of course, know that partition correspond to to conjugacy classes in the permutation group Sn. So we may view this conjugacy class in the permutation group Sn. And uh, the nice fact about this is that, uh, generally speaking, if is fixed and q goes to infinity, then this, the set of partitions corresponding to all the polynomials of degree n becomes equidistributed in, in these classes. Uh, the, measure the measure is defined just by the number of elements in each class. So this is a nice, nice completely elementary fact. Yes, so and then let's call this partition, I don't know, P of F, the set of P of F for all F becomes distributed. Of course, one may also consider the other limit where q is fixed and n goes to infinity, but then one needs to formulate the right questions because the space where, where we want a distribution varies. So we need to reformulate slightly the question, but there are results about that. But now, so now I want to present a nice result which I obtained recently, which generalizes this. So I won't state it precisely, but let say f of t and x 
to be a polynomial over f. Now we consider and f will be irreducible. Now consider the set of, again, these partitions for f of f. Yeah, so now we substitute our f's into some fixed polynomial. Again, for all the f of degree n, then, okay, then under some uh, conditions, which I will not state precisely, but they are not very restrictive, then under some conditions, and q going to infinity, this set becomes So this is a result of this type. Now I will state another result, which is, so this is one I obtained recently. And now I will state a result which is, of course, m much deeper about L functions in this setting. So. Okay, so how do I generalize these quadratic L functions in the function field case? So now let H be again square free. Let's suppose that it's of odd degree, call it to g plus 1. And we may consider again the, the L function uh, this time it will be defined in a slightly different variable. It will be okay, so I'll, I'll just mm, okay. it'll be the sum of overall manic polynomials again p over h again some sort of Kronecker symbol and now in the variable z to the degree deck p so this turns out to be a polynomial which can be actually factored in the following form And the, the alpha, I all have absolute value q to the one half. This is the Riemann hypothesis, which is, of course, proved in this case. And one might ask how how are the sets of zeros? Okay, alpha one two. distributed as again we range over yeah, all h with a g fixed and q going to infinity So there's a beautiful result obtained by Katz and Sarnak, which are, of course, local people. Yeah. So what they proved is in conjugacy classes. 
of the unitary symplectic group of size 2G. That is, uh, each matrix in this group has a set of eigenvalues, and so it defines a measure on all the sets of 2G points. And so th these L functions basically become equidistributed in this, in this matrix ensemble. Yeah, so this is a very beautiful result for me at least. And so another limit one can study in this context is, uh, is the, the, the other limit when Q is fixed and G goes to infinity. In this case, only partial results are known. Uh, okay, I won't get into the details, but uh, yeah, this case is of course much more difficult and I have done some work on that uh, joined with uh, Zev Rudnik and Edvaro de Gershon obtained some partial results. But again, a lot of work remains to be done in, in that case. And the other hand, in this limit, there's is basically a complete result in this problem. Yeah, so that's what I want to present. Thank you.